Hello Space Marines, it is Ebontis, and today I want to talk to you guys about classes in operations specifically. Haven't spent as much time in PvP, been focusing on operations, but honestly, I think for those of you who don't quite click with PvP, this is where you're going to spend most of your time. The campaign is kind of a one-shot. When you're done with that, this is where you're going to get your leveling and your progression and kind of your in-game challenge. Now, when it comes to the classes, there are a couple things about them. You can see I've spent some time with this one since I got the fabric like hanging off everywhere and stuff like that this is the bulwark but a lot of the classes have different benefits to them with regards to early on or late game or is it something that's available to everybody all the time or does it take a while to unlock the perk so what i want to do is kind of go through the classes in my personal opinion and again you guys can comment below where you guys are having success and that sort of thing but my goal is to give you guys classes that you can find success in in lots of places and then ones that may take a little longer or may have some niche cases or may need some skill in certain areas. So first I want to talk about is sadly assault. Now this is one I haven't spent a ton of time with, but when you play with the jump pack in the campaign, I got to tell you, it actually feels really fun. You can get extremely high. You can get big slam downs. You get the jump pack back very quickly. Now, the Assault does not have a primary weapon, and unfortunately, being as the jump pack is cool, but not really making up for a lack of a primary weapon, you do feel a bit lacking there. So you are going to lean mainly into your melee. You are the only one with the big power hammer. The Thunder Hammer is pretty beastly. You can get this thing up here for power. You're going to be doing an absolute massive damage. It is slow, so it takes a little bit to get used to. Chainsword, that one's available to a lot of places. So that might be the more universal one to level up. Only a couple have power gloves, so it's kind of up to you there. And then your pistol, you've got either the bolt pistol or the heavy bolt pistol. Good options either way. But the big thing I want to go through is the perks on these classes. And when it comes to the jump pack, when you get the jump pack, it does not feel the same as the campaign. Now, when you get to the end of some of these perk trees, some of these things may feel better. But the biggest thing is you do have perfect dodge timing increase. So if you like your dodges, that's going to be a good thing because you are going to be up in the mix because you're going to jump. And go slam into guys. So you are going to be somebody who wants to feel very comfortable up in the fight because you're going to jump into it constantly. But the other thing to know is you're going to want to be good at either dodging, parrying, and or both, basically. So if you have your perfect dodges, that's probably going to help you out a little bit more. And then you can get like your gun strikes and things of that nature. Now, when you're going through the perks, a couple main ones to look at are how are you going to contribute to your team? And what are your big signature moves that you're going to get? The little things like while performing charge attacks, you do not lose control. So that's like your big hammer attack. Secondary weapons increase damage. Like, that's not bad. Um, damage from melee attacks executed while sprinting or dashing are a little stronger. Some of these early perks are reasonable, but the team ones are where I do look for synergy with a team. Kind of importance of a class to bring with you. All squad members' abilities recharge 10% faster. It's not bad, but it's not like kind of a game changer. Then down here, you've got all squad members deal 20% more melee damage against Terminus level enemies. Terminus is going to be your lowest level to my understanding. And then down here, you've got all squad members, squad members deal 50% more gun strike damage. That one's probably one of the best of the three. If you've got a group that you know, especially friends, they're good at gun strikes. Maybe more dodging is going to be involved if they're using um, block level melee weapons, that kind of thing. That actually could be really good because you're doing more dodging and gun strikes to go with it. So that could pair pretty well. For your signature move, any use of the jump pack reloads the equipped weapon. That's pretty reasonable. So at least when you land, you've got something to fire. Jump pack leap deals damage to all enemies in the takeoff area. Not bad. Perfectly timed dodge using a jump pack dash restores jump pack's ability charge. So for your jump pack to be used more frequently, you've got to get this guy up to level 25. And unfortunately, as fast as the cooldown was in the campaign, it does not feel the same in operations. And for me, waiting all the way to level 25 to really be able to kind of plan on getting it back more frequently just doesn't have the same appeal. Now you got damage of charged attacks. Uh, after you're grabbed, you're going to do more damage. I don't really like any perks where like if I get my, knocked on my butt, then I'll do more damage when I get up. It's going to happen sometimes, but you don't really want to plan a build around it. Killing a bunch of enemies in rapid success session gets more equipment charge. Uh, enemies hit by melee attacks for 10% more so for me, it's just one of those things. Like if you like jumping in the air and you like using the power hammer, that's totally fine. <coughs> but for a team synergy, it doesn't feel like this one brings as much to it. So I'm going to rank this one as just the lowest of the tiers with regards to my personal rankings. If you're enjoying it and you have fun and you've got an awesome build style, don't get me wrong. I could see potential there. 
but I do feel like it's going to be a little bit more niche. You're going to need the right party with you, and you're also going to need a very skilled player who's probably maxed out the class pretty high for a lot of good perks to get the most use out of this class, because sadly, the jump pack, not as fun as the campaign and definitely not as powerful. So Assault, sadly, my lowest one, you could probably put that. If you're going to go like B, A, S tier, something like that, this is probably going to be a B tier. Now, when it comes to the Sniper, the main reason I'm not going to rank this quite as high, and it's not like I have anything against the Sniper, I think it's decent. The big thing about the Sniper is it is a skill class. So this is going to have a big giant asterisk, caveat, whatever you want to call it, if you are good at sniping, you can actually be very, very effective with this class. If you miss your shots, it definitely becomes a problem because you don't have much ammo. You can see you are going to have a whole 18 bullets with this gun, for example. Come up here and you're going to have a little bit more, but this one's not going to hit as hard. This one's hitting for seven. You've got the bolt carbine, which is kind of shooting peanuts, so not really a sniper weapon, so you're kind of defeating your own purpose. Then you've got the, la the last fusil, which is going to be much cooler. But unfortunately, you are definitely not going to want to miss. Now, you do have melee weapon. You're only going to have the combat knife. And the thing about some of the weapons is the fact that if you are going to work on playing a class early, and I'll explain that a little bit too, some loadouts are not going to be as universal. Everybody gets the bolt pistol. I probably said this in a separate video, but everybody gets the bolt, pi bolt pistol. Now, me, I was enjoying the plasma pistol on my bulwark. But I have not actually taken that quite as high because everybody has the bolt pistol. So I was working on leveling that up. So bolt pistol, everybody's going to get that. And your combat knife, not as strong. Like you can get a pretty potent one up here. And especially if you get into, you know, certain types of, you know, range and just swinging pretty hard and mostly going for dodges. That's probably fine. But it is just a combat knife. So you get one option. When you come over to the perk tree. You've got some interesting ones with both the team and the signature ability. Your sniper ability camouflages you until your next attack breaks it. Now, it lasts as long as kind of the perk cooldown goes, but it's a pretty good time. Also, headshot name is increased by 10%. You really want to make sure you hit your headshots because if you don't, you're kind of throwing your class away kind of in the trash because you're wasting your ammo. Now, some of the perks you get, like you have more ammo capacity, which is going to help. Recoil from bolt sniper rifles uh, is going to be reduced. If you come across here, manually activating camo removes negative status effects. So if you get like pinned down or if you get bad like vision issues, like it's the kind of poison thing, that's going to be something you can actually clear on your own. If you're reviving a squad member, member clo a camo cloak hides you and the squad member for five seconds without spending a charge. Sorry, I can't talk for apparently some reason. This is really powerful. So if you're good at this class, there is a lot of potential here for you to camo in, revive the team member, Cloak everybody, give you five seconds to run around a little bit. On high difficulties, I could see this actually being like a Destiny Hunter. If you don't know, like they were, you know, invisible, go in, revive. Similar kind of thing. I could see this definitely having potential. Um, when the Claim of Cloak deactivates, you take 20% less damage. So if you do come out of it when you don't want to, a little, little better. But for your team perks, headshot damage increased by 10% for all members. This is one of those where it's like, you would think I would rank this higher. And it's honestly because of this alone, just bringing damage to everybody is going to make each activity you do, no matter what difficulty, a little bit easier all the time. Weapon spread is reduced by 20% for all squad members, depending on what weapons you're using. If you know your teammates and they're good shots, that may not be that necessary. A headshot kill restores ability charge by 10% for any squad member. Literally, if I get a headshot kill, somebody else gets a headshot kill, you're getting your abilities back faster, which is going to make all of you more powerful. So if you're getting a lot of headshot kills, and that's on little enemies, by the way, that can count too. So you can get your recharges back pretty damn quick. But headshot damage alone, bringing this in at level 5, that can be something you can have effective all the way through, like even level 21. And then you can kind of think about which one you want to go between. For your signature moves, after a perfectly timed dodge, uh, camo cloak automatically activates without spinning a charge. So if you just dodge, you're invisible. That's fantastic. So if somebody does to get near you and you pull off a dodge, guess what? You can still get out of there and still be safe, back off, and then do the damage that you're going to do as a sniper. When you receive lethal damage, camo cloak automatically activates without spinning a charge and you become invulnerable for five seconds. So you're actually not going to die. You have the ability to get out of dodge invisible and that can honestly save you in some of those missions where it's really rough. Believe me, there are moments where I wish I had something like this. Performing four consecutive headshots restores one equipment charge. 
So all of these things, like you've got revive potential, you've got perfect time timed camo. If you're again dodging, you want to learn how to do it. But the fact that you can be invisible when you dodge as opposed to other things, that brings a lot more to it. Uh, if you, I'm not going to go through every single perk of like reloading while you're low on melee. You get a little more damage. You're, you revive squad members 30% faster. Again, that's going to pair really well if you're going to revive people. This is where you start kind of synergizing perks a little bit. Melee damage against majors. That might be less beneficial for you. Ma manually activating camo automatically reloads ranged weapons. Maybe you just want to like reload, get to a different position, and then unload your sniper again. A headshot restore, uh, headshot kill restores camo cloaks charged by 5%. So if you're getting a lot of headshots, you can actually benefit yourself. And that might be a really good one to have long term. So for me, the sniper is definitely going to have a bit of an asterisk. If you are good with a sniper rifle, you know if you are or you're not. I'm okay. I have moments, definitely miss plenty of shots. That's why I was like, I'll play it some, but it's probably not going to be my skilled class. The combat knife, that's definitely going to be one where you just want to be good at dodging. It's not going to be a beast melee weapon until you level it up for a while. And your pistol is going to be basically the bolt pistol, so you're going to use it as is. This class is decent. I would say I would put it a little bit above assault, but there is a definite high skill potential to it, but you have to be able to use the class well. Biggest thing about it, if you hit your shots well, you can bring potential because hitting your snipes in the back, like you don't want a sniper and a heavy in the same round, I would say, mainly because those two are going to kind of be both sitting in the back pumping out damage. But if you are the one who likes to sit in the back and you're good at it, you can definitely bring something to the table. You just got to know what you're doing. So keep that in mind. So, I mean, I would put them at probably a B plus, A minus tier, mostly just for the skill potential. But they do have um, a pretty good like amount of damage output. And especially if you get some of these weapons leveled up, you're looking at 13, 14. I mean, those headshots are going to hit like a truck. If you can get it right, when you get up there at the max, they're definitely one with the right skill that are probably going to be able to pump some enemies, like blow some heads off pretty well. So next here, we're going to get to kind of probably mid-level, and that's going to be the heavy. Now, heavy is probably going to be a little divisive as well. But for me, this is kind of a preference thing. You don't have a melee weapon in this game. You have a bit of a stomp. You can kind of like throw your weight around as a heavy, but you don't have a melee weapon. Now, your whole purpose is to sit in your iron halo, create a barrier, and put out range damage, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you have good teammates in the front of you who are like strong, like you've got a vanguard grappling in, you've got a bulwark up there in the shield, and you're a heavy in the back just pumping out damage, you can actually do very well with this because you can manage the range damage coming at you. You can cover if they need to kind of duck and cover. You can be like a good teammate, but also you have to have the right team. Like if you're just going to run under the heavy and then like an assault and a sniper, y'all probably going to die. If you run in with a, as I said, like a bulwark, a vanguard, two more front runners, and a heavy pumping out damage on the back, then you got some potential. That's why this one's kind of like, kind of in that medium, like that same mid-range. It's like situational a bit more than anything. So a powerful barrier blocks all range damage. That's really, really powerful because sometimes those sniper shots will ruin everything. Uh, when Iron Halo is active, all squad members within 50 meters take less damage as well. So you do bring that in, and 50 meters is a pretty damn big range unless you're running around an arena. You're going to be able to do a lot there. Now, signature moves. When active, the Iron Halo deals damage over time to enemies that are close by. So if you do start to get swarmed by enemies and you pop this thing up, you are able to, one, mow down a lot of enemies, but two, put that little damage over time effect on those enemies that are close. So if you get to a point where you just need to, like, hunker down and everybody gets close to you and they're just shooting guns to try and keep things protected, you can hold down the fort for a little while. If both of your squad members are incapacitated, not a great place to be, so it's not really a perk that I love. I personally don't love picking perks like this because I don't want a perk to be something that, that I have to wait to get use out of until I die. And this one is, um, if both team members are down, your primary weapon will not overheat. That's not a bad thing, but that's not anything I would overly wait on. And again, also some of these perks I don't love and I do love. That's another reason why I wait these classes the way I do. When Iron Halo is active, all squad members with 100 meters you're going to have to be running halfway across the map to leave them that far. Regenerate ability charge 50% faster. It's nice to get your ability back faster, but that's kind of one of those things where 
it's only beneficial if you can coordinate with your team. Hey, you guys use your abilities. I'll pop my Iron Halo. I'll get it back. And this is going to take level 25 to really start helping everybody out. So for me, the fact that you're like a little damage over time, if everybody's down, big if, and then you finally get down here, that's, this can be, bring some benefits. But again, waiting to level 25 to bring fun stuff in, that's not something I enjoy doing. So again, you take a little less damage from range attacks. That's not bad. Uh, ammo capacity for all squad members, that's 25%. That's decent. Uh, reviving a squad member restores them to full health. Now that actually does have potential, but again, we're getting a little lower. But that's kind of one of those where it's like, if people are dying, you can give them full health. But if you don't die, you get nothing out of this. Uh, when you come in here, just better health, like 20% more health. That has actually got some potential to it. When in heavy stance, that's basically when you're zoomed in. Dealing damage restores 15% more of your contested health, but you're not going to be able to move at all. The give and takes I'm not really loving here. Uh, if you come over here, after Iron Halo deactivates, you take 20% less health damage. Iron Halo's durability lasts a little longer. That one's probably going to be good versus Iron Halo recharges faster, but its durability is less. So you get it back more frequently, eh, but it doesn't last 30% as long. So it's not even like an even trade. And then down here, Iron Halo loses energy 15% more slowly. So it just lasts a little bit longer. Uh, when it expends all of its energy, enemies within a 5 meter radius take a big pop of damage. Uh, when Iron Halo is in cooldown, range damage increases by 15%. That's actually pretty decent, I would say, for you. Because if it's down, you're doing more damage, which is probably when you want to make sure things are going to die. Um, so for me, the Heavy is a good teammate to have if you've got them leveled up. And again, certain like potential here when you've got different teammates with you and other stuff that's going on. All squad members deal more damage when you're in range and if you guys work together and coordinate. But you are going to need the right team for it. If you feel like you're going to go lead the pack as this thing, that is not your job. You're not going to be running in. You don't have a melee, which I do not really like. I always like having that potential. So you've got to crutch on your teammates a little bit more here. It's not like you can kind of carry things on your own as well. If you don't have a melee, you're going to be missing out on kind of a, like a third of the action. Also, another thing about playing this class, you're not going to be leveling up any of the melees. That's one of the things that even my stupid butt, I'm not leveling up a primary weapon, but that's just me. So that's the heavy. Decent as a team with leveled up, but you need the right team. But if you commit to heavy and you've got a couple other people that play good classes, then you're going to be in pretty good shape. So we've covered three of them so far. These I would put on the lower end. Like Assault, the jetpack is just not selling it to me. Sniper, high potential, but you got to have the skills to bring it to the table. Heavy, mid, mid tier as well. Again, with the right team, though, can bring a lot of damage potential if used correctly. But your teammates really have to make sure that they're helping cover you and take some of the front damage. Because if you get surrounded, you can be in trouble a little bit. The Iron Halo can only help you so much. So then we get to some more of the top three classes that I keep seeing around. So one of them is going to be the Vanguard. Now, this is actually pretty solid in PvP, but that's not what it's for. But the Grapple Launcher, when this thing gets charged up, is actually pretty damn powerful in PvP. So don't sleep on this one. If you want to try something in PvP, try this one. You could probably have some fun. But the Grapple Launcher, and I've done the trials on these as well. I haven't taken them nearly as high as my Bulwark, but I've done the trials, played a few rounds, gotten a feel for each of them if you're wondering my experience. There's only so much time. I got my Bulwark up to 18. I've been trying to push him up there. But again, I'll cover the, you know, the last three here. So the grapple launcher gives you potential. One, you've got three different weapons. You've got your melt launcher which is a pretty beastly weapon if you can use it right, because you're going to grapple into close range. But the grapple does damage too, which is kind of nice, but it recharges pretty damn quick, which I really like. Uh, Oculus bolt carbon rifle and the instigator bolt carbon rifle, uh, just kind of different damage impact and rounds and stuff like that. Or you can just have this beast. Uh, you got bolt pistol, same thing. Level up your bolt pistol, every class has it. Combat knife or chainsword. Again, a lot of people are going to have the chainsword, so that's a popular one I would level up as well. Grapple launcher. So, the grapple launcher prepares you to an enemy, allowing you to perform a diving kick. Starting, uh, contested health regenerates faster. So, that, that non-red but white bar of health that you're trying to recover through damage, you can get it back a little bit faster. Uh, the big stuff here for your team, all squad members deal 15% more melee damage. I can promise you, you're likely going to have at least one other melee damage member with you. And if anybody gets in a pinch, most likely outside of a heavy, they're going to be doing some melee. So this is a win for everybody, and it's at level 5. Again, easy perks early on that you can help your entire team, that is a W. Then you come down here, melee finishers of extremist enemies additionally restore a small amount of health for any squad member. That's not bad. 
Uh, and all squad members can restore ability charges by 15% by performing finishers. And you do that a lot. So, I mean, it's kind of a toss-up between more melee damage for everybody and then the abilities back faster. Could kind of coordinate with your team if you play with friends you know. Signatures. Performing a finisher with a grapple launcher restores its charge. So, if you see a, you know, bigger enemy, a major, who's sitting there stunned, you can jump in with a grapple launcher kill them, and you've got your charge back already and good to go, you could grapple her into a couple different ones, even if they're spread out. Nobody else can do that. That's actually pretty powerful to get those finishers before they lose their stun. They last for a while, but you can jump in and get to them pretty quick. Taking lethal damage restores all armor instead of incapacitating you. This is, again, a get-out-of-jail-free card. Anytime you find one of these, they're pretty potent and powerful. Melee kills of majorous or higher enemies restore health by 1%. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you don't get kills that often. You don't get health back that often, I should say. So I would probably have to put this one through its paces, but there's still potential there. But even this one, just using your grapple launcher for any finisher and getting it right back so you can use it for something else, that's kind of fantastic. So quick team access and quick recharge of your ability alone just on the first line, not going to take you as long to have fun. Then you kind of get into some stuff here. If you are grabbed or knocked down, you deal more. I don't love that one. So you come down here, killing 10 enemies in rapid succession. If you're grappling in, you're probably going to do that frequently. Your equipment gets a charge. Your health is less than 50%. Your perfect dodge window is doubled. This I love. So you're going to grapple in and charge in the middle. Even if you don't have the most health in the world, we do live by our armor in this game. You guys all know that. Your perfect dodge window, you're going to use that a lot more frequently. And now you've got a much easier chance of doing it. Uh, you take 20% less melee damage, but 10% more range. Depending on your party loadout, that may be okay and balanceable, but still a trade-off. The moment your armor is fully depleted, you take 15% less health damage. So if you do run out of armor, and then you take a little less damage, but then you can get a finisher, you can kind of play that little game for a little while. After a perfectly timed parry or dodge, you do not lose control. I don't love these things where if you get, like, if you get hit again, I understand because I've been hit before. I just don't feel like these are usually quite as worth it. Melee damage increases against Majoris and higher. Honestly, if you're, like, grappling into a big enemy, doing more damage to them all the time, kind of a win. So, not bad there. After a diving kick, you take a little less range damage. You are going to be in the mix, so you're probably going to get shot by a few things. Pretty solid. Diving Kick additionally deals damage in a 5 meter radius, so you can make that thing do a little bit more. Diving Kick additionally deals a small amount of damage to enemies on the way. I would probably go between those two. And then Grapple Launcher is in cooldown, weapon damage is used. So if you do use this thing, which you're probably going to use a lot, you can now have your weapons do 10% more damage all the time. Grapple Launcher comes back faster, kind of a toss up. Um, so you've just got some solid all around perks in here. The grapple launcher gives you some mobility. You're going to be jumping around. You can get to enemies faster that you kind of want to stagger or stutter on. And I really do think the combination of weapon options you get with the big melter rifle and some Oculus, you've got a melee, you've got some mobility around. Don't sleep on the Vanguard. This is why I'm going to put them as kind of an A minus or a, about an A tier, not up to S yet or anything like that. They might be flirting with it though. So maybe A to A plus. They're a solid class, and in PvP, that grapple launcher is kind of broken. I'm sure it'll get fixed at some point, but still a very fun class to use, and when you start getting a feel for the grapple launcher get a few perks unlocked, this thing has a lot of potential. So, my final top two are going to be, shocking, one of the ones that I played, and then also one of the recent ones. So, we're going to start with Tactical, because the Auspex scan is kind of massive now you get a lot of weapons you can pick from so if you got a preference you can use one but i will tell you the heavy bolt rifle alone just got done using it feels pretty good the plasma incinerator also kind of love that weapon so if you prefer that one hey guess what bolt pistol not shocking chainsword that's all you got so again bolt pistol and chainsword if you're looking for things to level up i do recommend these two perk tree here for the tactical a headshot will instant kill will instant kill a major or extremist level enemy marked by your scan. There's a reason this is a high tier for me, and it's this right here. Now, I know this is a long one to get to, and you've got some other potential along the way, but when you get to this point, if you can actually throw your scan out, get somebody, and just literally get a headshot on them, and it's a one-tap kill, that is a game changer when it comes to high-level difficulty stuff, because the amount of health some of these enemies take is kind of crazy, and... The fact that you can do this even on one, if it's a big guy, for perhaps, example, whatever, major or extremist level, 
everything basically except something with a boss bar is going to be one tappable. And believe me, there are so many enemies I wish I could just take down in one shot. This alone makes this class something I want to level up. Now, up here, enemies marked by this game cannot call for reinforcements. This is also good. You ever been playing in mission? Maybe your team's not that great. Something along those lines. You see those reinforcements gets called and then it makes it through and the reinforcements come. Oh, man, that's a bummer. The fact that you can stop that from range is actually something nobody else can do besides trying to shoot them. And it's one of those things you might even have to reload. But if you can chunk this thing out there, you're good. And then you can kind of work your way over there. A melee finisher deals additionally deals significant area of effect damage. You do a lot of melee finishers, so that actually has some potential to it, but I still think both of these. This one in game though, probably the best potential. A recoil reduced for all squad members, not bad. Uh, range damage increased by 5% for all squad members. That again, bringing damage to your entire squad just all the time, very solid. And finally here, all squad members restore 30% more contested health. That could be really good depending on if you get into it, but this one alone, just extra damage. If you can play like choke lanes and kind of manage the battlefield correctly, this is a lot of potential here. A couple other perks you've got after a finisher, your ranged weapon reloads automatically. I don't know if I can tell you how many times that that would be really nice where you're like empty a clip and then you do see that they're finishable. If you could automatically be reloaded after that and just keep going, yeah, you'll burn through some ammo, but at least you're going to be effective like the entire time on the battlefield. After a perfectly timed dodge, you do not lose control. So if you do dodge and somebody else hits you, you can manage to stay on your feet. After a gun strike, range damage is increased by 25%. So if you do get good at your dodges, there's a lot of these classes that can benefit from it. But if you get that gun strike off, yeah, you're going to be able to do that frequently. In any melee class, once you get to a decent level of damage, you're kind of swinging wide on some of those groups. You're going to be able to gun strike a lot of the small enemies, and that's a quick way to get your boost up on damage. And then you can go pump the bullets into a bolts, I should say, or plasma bolts uh, into a big enemy for 25% more damage. After switching weapons, your secondary does 20% more damage. That's pretty solid. Oh, this one. You can just get ammo back. Killing a major or higher level enemy restores your primary weapon's ammo by a magazine. Ammo is a precious resource, so if you can actually get that kill, maybe you coordinate it with your team a little bit, you can manage your ammo a lot better than most can. Bolt weapons can penetrate more enemies, so if you are using a bit more of an auto, you know, auto rifle on a lot of those smaller enemies, that piercing can help your ammo be much, much more effective. This is kind of your like jack of all trades because it is based around your weapons and that scan. But the benefit that you can bring to a team is honestly really huge. And it's just one of those things I don't know if I can rave on enough. Final thing is the bulwark. This one to be up in the mix with a shield. Now granted, you don't have a primary weapon. That is not your job. You are doing melees, you are doing shield blocks and find a secondary weapon that you love using. Honestly, the bolt pistol is the one I recommend to level up because everybody's got one. So that's one of those things that if you do start getting comfortable with it, you get up here, you've got an eight plus or nine plus, depending on your magazine preference. You've got a pretty potent like little bolt pistol here. Plasma pistol though, when you get this thing to high level and you've got the ability to charge it up and basically stun right in place any of those bigger enemies, very, very good potential. Power sword is, this is the only class that uses it. And I can tell you, you've got two different stances and you've also got like block balance and fencing. So your fencing is really good for your parrying and then your balance is kind of that in between. And then your block is going to be doing some slow but chunky damage. So it depends on how you want to play that one. But the fact that I can change modes with this weapon to do big, broad cleaving strokes on the small groups of enemies and then I can just hold the attack button real quick and switch over to that single target damage. Nobody else has like the alternate fire here of the power sword and you're going to be up in the mix. You got your shield, you got the block on, all that kind of stuff going on. Then you get into your perk trees. So when my armor's depleted, I, I drop a shot grenade at my feet. Happens every two minutes. So if my armor gets like knocked out by a bunch of little guys and that shot grenade drops at my feet. Guess what? They're all struggling. That will pair very well. Enemies take a sh area, a shock area more damage. So they're taking that damage over time. Then if I really get in a pinch, the banner deals a small amount of damage over time to enemies as well. I didn't go with this one because after a shield bash, you don't lose control. Don't really love that as much. So I can do like a pretty good amount of tick damage in the moment where say I lose my armor, plop a banner down, and then I've got all this going on. Works really well. 
contested health fades 50% more slowly for all squad members. It's kind of a toss up. The delay before armor begins to regenerate being slower. Like if you're doing the dodge roll away from a big group of enemies, this can be beneficial, but this one for everybody to earn their health back kind of helps. I'm trying to get this one down here. All squad members take 20% less health damage from terminus level enemies. Just literally having everybody survive better is definitely a thing you're going to want to bring to the table. Uh, up here, when your armor is fully depleted, you take less damage. Here's another one. When your health is less than 50%, you take less damage. You are meant to be in the mix. That is why you have a shield. That is why you have a shield bash. That can do more damage. Uh, you can have a knockback as well. So if you start swinging that shield, knocking back enemies and make them lose control for longer, you can really manage a big group of melee enemies all by yourself. Now, if you pair a bulwark with, say, a vanguard with the grapple, the grapple comes in, kind of gets the initial stagger. You'll run up behind them, and then you're both managing. And this is where, whether it's a sniper or a heavy behind you, you can really let these two shine if you've got the power up front. Uh, when it comes to the bulwark, you know, a perfectly timed parry instantly incapacitates an enemy. Are you kidding me? Like, some of the potency of these classes that I'm getting to on the higher tiers, this is why. They really are pretty damn strong. After a shield bash, melee damage is increased. You can shield bash anytime you want to. So, if you're worried about your armor getting fully depleted and your health taking less damage, that's a thing. But... If your shield bash basically makes your melee do more damage all the time, you can shield bash, melee, 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 shield bash, melee, melee, melee. You're going to have that damage up damn near the entire time. If, sur if you're surrounded by enemies, you take less damage. Kind of a good thing. And again, if you swap off of, say, the shot grenade pairing, you might come down here. And if you have armor remaining, you do not lose control upon taking a hit and you cannot be knocked back. So if you have armor, you're not going down. You're always going to be in that fight. But again, the perfectly timed parry, kind of a rare one. I'm probably going to live on that one once I get down to it. I think I actually just unlocked it recently. I just haven't actually got it. But yeah, everybody taking less damage from the low-level enemies because you're just in the mix, so nobody's going to take quite as much. And your ability to walk in with a massive shield, take a lot of damage. You're the only one who can just hold up a shield and take range damage. Nobody else can do that besides the heavy with their ability, but you've got a shield to do it all the time. I had a little fun with the graphics here, but that is kind of where I'm at for tiers. I know this is a bit of a long video, but I wanted to talk you all through the classes, the perks, the weapons, and just kind of my thoughts. On the lower end of thing, the assault. Don't love it as much. High skill ceiling with the right team. Sniper is definitely one not to sleep on, but you got to make sure you hit your shots. And you just got to talk to yourself and be real. Do you hit your sniper shots? Or are you only so, so, so at it, kind of like I am? And you're like, that eh, may not be the best choice, but it's fun to do it low level stuff. Heavy definitely brings potential if you've got people up in front. But again, the Vanguard, the mobility to move around, the perks getting to be awesome. Tactical and Bulwark are probably two favorite at the top. And I hope that overview of the classes kind of sets you all up to get an idea of who you want to play. So those are kind of my rankings of the classes. Those are my favorite ones that I recommend that you play. And honestly, if you want to really just have a question where to start, Jack of all trades, tactical, you kind of can't go wrong. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like below, leave a comment if you have thoughts about any of these classes. If you've got a good build, perks, weapons, anything of that nature, drop them in the comments below, share that with everybody. If you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it's Ibantis. If you want to help support the channel, subscription, drop a like on the video. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can always do a YouTube membership or Patreon, but just showing up, watching a video. Thank you guys for everything, and I'll see you soon.